All right, everybody, welcome back. Come on inside theCUBE. We're here at RSAC 2024, wrapping up day four at Broadcast Alley. Alicia Keys is booming in the background. The crowd just shuffled in. It's amazing. They have, actually, they have the big concert in the afternoon here in Moscone at RSAC. Brian Roddy is here. He's the Vice President of Product Management for Cloud Security and Privacy at Google Cloud Platform. Thank you so much for taking some time. It's very Spend exciting to be here. You. It's good to see you. Just come, we were just talking, just coming off of Google. Next, yeah. amazing innovations in AI. Our data from our partner ETI, ETR really shows Google you know, making big, big head, headway in terms of customer penetration in the machine learning and AI sector, so congratulations. Thank you. The, it's just the beginning, as they it say. Is. It uh, is. But, we're here to talk about security, AI and security are obviously coming together, that's all we're like talking about here. peanut butter and chocolate, show. two great tastes. So, <laughs> so, and you guys got Mandiant, you know, we do the Mandiant show every year, that's an amazing pickup by Google, super important around threat intelligence. What's your story at RSA? Well, you know, at, uh, at Google we view security as one of the core responsibilities of the company. Yeah. We have billions of users that use our products every day, and so we view it as you know, something we need to make sure we keep our customers safe. And over the past couple decades, we've developed tremendous capabilities in security. But like you mentioned, even having the, some of the best security capabilities in the world, we were humble enough to realize we needed someone like Mandiant, who's on the front lines right. of, uh, of intelligence. I think last year the stat was something like, we spent 400,000 hours using Mandiant consultants to do incident response. That's given us tremendous insight into security kind of across the board, which is, yeah. which is fantastic. And we decided what we want to do is just help our customers make our security part of their security, right? We want to be part of their security team. And so we've done that by building that into our products and into our platform. You know, we have great threat intelligence. We have the Mandiant consultants available to help. We've built that into an Intel-driven SecOps portfolio. And of course, our cloud platform is pretty darn good and pretty darn secure. So, you know, we're really excited about all that that we can take to market and take to, take to our customers. So Mandiant is kind of the, was really is the gold standard. Uh, yeah. when, when something goes wrong, people, if you don't know, people call Mandiant, they come in and basically, they go to do the deep forensics and they say, okay, here's yeah. the anatomy of the hack. They recommend, you know, what to do next. My question is, Brian, since the acquisition, I mean, you can have partnerships with Mandiant for sure, but now that they're part of Google, how has that affected and informed your service and product strategy? No, it's a great question. The Mandiant team has been a real boon for us, and I think there's several ways that it's really impacted us. First, we've been able to bring in that great, just pure experience and knowledge of what's happening on the front line mm -hmm. and turn that into threat intelligence. So we already had some great threat intelligence teams. You know, I think right. any one of our threat intelligence team would be viewed as like a crown jewel anyplace else, but now we have like four of them. We're bringing them together. I, I think of it almost like Thanos' gauntlet. We're throwing in the different crown jewels to make a super powerful set of threat intelligence. Uh, so Mandiant really has turbocharged us in that way. But you know, what we found is that as much as we love AI, and I have a lot to talk about on AI and all the things it can do on the security side, coupling that with the human intelligence that Mandiant brings really does bring a tremendous amount of power and differentiation yeah. for us. Superpower, for yeah. sure. You know, I see that you, you have the latest release of uh, Google security operations and that's really kind of designed to sort of, I mean, and everybody's focused on how to reduce complexity, how to get things as simple as possible. Yeah. Talk with us a little bit about how you see this really aiding the SOC. Yeah, you know, uh, what, what we did is we took all of these different components, our threat intelligence, our SIM, our SOAR, and we brought them together under the rubric of Google security operations. And we've been turbocharging that with AI. You know, I think if you talk to any security professional, I've been doing this for a couple decades, and in that time, every security professional you talk to says, I love the mission, I hate my job. My job is just filled with toil, it's filled with challenges, I have to spend so much time doing grunt work and busy work. And that's where we see the power of AI kind of turbocharging our security yeah. operations portfolio. We can help them understand what's happening in their environment, prioritize so they focus their energy, their calories, on what matters most so they have the best and highest use of their time. And on top of that, you know, we don't view uh, it necessary for us to automate their jobs. What we want to do is we want to help them understand the environment so they can do their jobs better. You know, the way we think about it is we want to use AI to help us explain to them what's happening in their environment so they learn and get better. 
and we want to give them the tools on, these are all the ways you can remediate and automatically fix things in your environment. Right. And so pulling those pieces together really makes an exciting turbocharge experience for well, us. Well, this is, a, I mean, this is a job that not everybody <laughs> can do. I mean, when I think about the stress and the pressure on people in these roles, oh and I God, think yes. about, you know, part of what you were talking about was we don't want to automate their jobs. We want to be able to provide tools that give them the information they need at their fingertips. They don't have yeah. to do the grunt work. They can focus on, you know, the higher level threats that they need to worry about and things like that. So I, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, look, I mean, if you talk to any security pro professional, as you well know, they are inundated with alerts. They're inundated with, with uh, opportunities to make things better. Yeah. And really, uh, every moment counts, right? Every moment for them, they need to make sure they're putting in the right way to secure the environment. Because, yeah. you know, heaven knows out there all the attackers are, have plenty of time and plenty of funding to do some pretty bad stuff. Yeah, they and yeah. so they really need to They're highly themselves. capable, for sure. You got a bunch of announcements here. Yeah. yeah look at that. It, Google Threat Intelligence. Yeah. Uh, you, got, you got SecOps, uh, Google Security Operations. Yeah. Just you got new Gen AI, Gen AI tools, which I think are Gemini uh, yeah. powered, of course. Uh, so maybe, where do you want to start? We focus on those and yeah, that sounds great. Double click. Thanks for the opportunity. You bet. Uh, on the threat intelligence side, you know, uh, Mandian had something that was Mandian Threat Intelligence. You know, as a result of all of, of their work on incident response, all of their work analyzing the threat landscape, they had an incredible asset there. In addition to that, Google has something called Virus Total. This is a tool used by security professionals all around the world to essentially get a sense of what's going on with any particular threat, any particular piece of malware, and get a sense of that. And then we have other threat intelligence inside of Google. What we decided to do was bring all those teams together and get real leverage. Because if you think about it, security is one of these areas where there are economies of scale. The more you know what the bad guys are up to, the better job you can do stopping them. And so by aggregating all this together and taking the human intelligence, the AI generated intelligence, we can create a really, really insightful portfolio. And then we can use that threat intelligence to turbocharge everything we do, everything from the platform to security operations, all across the board. So that's, that's where we're going with threat intelligence. How, how do you, what's your vision? What's Google's vision around the SecOps uh, analyst experience? Yeah. Presumably, as you say, they love the mission, hate the job, so presumably AI can help make the job a little bit more palatable. What, what does that mean for the Sec, SecOps analyst experience? Yeah. So what, the first thing we want to do is make sure they have access to all the data they could possibly want. And I think one of the innovations of our sim, using Google data technology, using Google search technology, we've been able to bring in 10x more data, have much longer context windows of the, of the logs and events inside of their environment. So that's super duper exciting. And then what we want to do is we want to help them really prioritize. So by taking this great threat intelligence and putting it on that big chunk of data, we can do things others can't. So for instance, now we announce every time a new piece of threat intelligence comes in, we apply that to a full year's context. Other sims only can do, say, three months. We do a full year's worth of context. So we can see, has somebody been running around in your environment? Has someone, uh, this, this threat been active in your environment? We can detect it and find it. So by, by doing this, we're able to bubble up what are the most urgent areas for you to spend time. But it's more than that, you know, what we want to do is we want to help that SecOps person so when they come in in the morning they can see these are the incidents I'm most worried about, these are the uh, can, you know, indicators of compromise I'm most worried about, how do I remediate them, how do I take action? And that's, the most, that's where this kind of reducing toil comes in. We're using AI to come up with all the ways that you can remediate that, giving customers tools to help them understand how to do that and how to be even move to this direction of being more proactive against these kinds of things. And I interact with that system through some kind of query language or my human language? Yeah, I mean the great thing about uh, our Sims UI is it's so beautiful and so simple. You can walk up to it, you can type in a search and say, what's happening in my environment? I can speak to it in natural language. I can, mm. add, I can query my environment and understand what's happening. I can get reports of all of the major activities and incidents and, respo and respond to them. Our SOAR, which is a Security Orchestration Automation yep. and Response Thank System, you. as you know. Uh, Thank you for spelling out the acronyms <laughs> for our audience. <laughs> so many acronyms. Yeah. So um, many. You can define playbooks for, for all the kinds of things that come up. And so what we want to do is make it really easy so I get just the information I need to know how to handle this. And that goes not only for the security 
uh, uh, professional, but it might be the cloud administrators who also need some of that kinds of information. It might be for a developer. Maybe a developer made a mistake, checked in some code they shouldn't have, opened up a vulnerability inside of the environment. We make it really easy for all of those different folks to understand what happened in their environment and how to fix it. For a security professional, that might be, here's a set of steps to remediate it. For a developer, it might be, here's some code that you might want to use to check into your environment that can shut that down. And the beauty of AI and LLMs is we actually can tailor the response based on what we know about the user, the task that they're trying to perform, and really give them just what they need to make things move. So I get up in the morning, and I get a cup of coffee, <laughs> and I walk to my desk, and I have an AI-generated task list. That's right. And then, so I know what's the most, I don't have to think about what am I doing today. I have an AI generated task list and then I have an AI generated remediation guide that walks me through the stuff I need to do to get through my task list. So everything is about really making that lift a little less heavy. That's right, that's right. And on top of that, you know, the other thing we're trying to do is educate those, those yeah. professionals, right? With Mandiant, we can give you this, uh, they have this great threat intelligence. We've now merged it together into Google Threat Intelligence. We can give you a, we give you a daily report of what are the bad guys up to? What are these threat actors doing? How are they, what, uh, what uh, industries are they going after? So you can get a sense of what is the zeitgeist out there? How do I need to respond? When I'm, when I'm responding to these tickets, you know, we not only give you that remediation, we explain why. Because you know, our whole goal here is to make sure that the talent is improving yeah. while we're reducing that toil. Well, and we need to, I mean, we have this middle base of, of tech people that we need to up level, you That's know? Right. And I think That's that, right. so we've got the entry level jobs and we've got lots of work for them, but it's this right. middle here, I think, that we're hearing a lot from other vendors that this is the focus on educating that group. No, you're, 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 you're spot on because you know, what we want to do is we want to make a, a, an entry level employee operate almost as if they have three or four years of yeah. experience because they're backed by this. And we want to make sure they can advance their career yeah. through this education, through Everybody wins. Yeah, we think I mean, so. I really, mean, really, so. yeah. I think the pace of, I think it's fair to say the pace of innovation is actually uh, astonishing everyone. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I would say even Google, um, who's right at the heart of this, one yeah. of the top, you know, two, three, you know, AI companies in the world. Yeah. So when the rest of us sort of had the AI awakening in, in you know, late 2022, yeah. we very shortly thereafter started really thinking more deeply about vector databases and retrieval augmented generation. Absolutely. Um, which now, a couple years later, people are like, eh, it's actually kind of trivial, which is <laughs> astounding when you think about it. <laughs> but what is the role for RAG in security, yeah. and how is Google using RAG specifically? We're using RAG pretty much everywhere okay. uh, in, a, in all the AI offerings that we're building, yeah. because look, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the latest threat intelligence, for example, is up to speed and inside of this environment. We can't do that by just having a, an LLL where we trained, say, three months ago, six months ago. We need to have, make sure it has access to the latest information. Mm -hmm. But I think more generally, and I think you know, what you're getting at is, 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 the, is the heart of the issue, which is this AI space is changing every three months, right? Every three months there's a new technique, a new approach. For instance, today you know, we spend a lot of time talking about how it's not just a single LLM, you have an agent-based model where you have an LLM up front that's doing some of the planning, and then that might call out to other more specialized LLMs. Even that architecture is changing. Yeah. And so, you know, the way we view the space is it's incredibly important for us to deliver features, sure, but any point feature is only as important as how quickly we're learning, how quickly we're getting feedback from our customers, how quickly we can apply it. And I think at the end of the day, the companies that spend a lot of time learning and improving very quickly will be the winners. And I think that's also why the space is moving so fast, is everyone recognizes that, and so the race is on yeah. to learn. So, you know, other areas that we don't talk much about is how do we instrument all of these tooling to make sure that our customers are really getting value? How do we measure that? How do we make sure we understand they see the opportunities of how this uh, AI can be used? How do we get that feedback into the mix? So again, for us, it's not only these point features, it's not only things like connecting to RAG, though that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. It's how do we make sure we're embracing every new technique that comes out in the right way for the right approach for the right user. In this whole conversation about multiple LLMs, I'd love to go there, but I don't want to take it too far <laughs> off the, the topic. But I do want to come back to, because what we've found with our RAG is our, our small little cube AI, um, is that it's like a honeycomb 
where there's holes. And, and when there's data, it's actually quite good. Yeah. Where there's not, it starts making stuff up. Um, and so, I, I, I know yeah. you understand this problem very well. Yeah. Uh, in security, that would be a bad thing. Yeah, so, <laughs> very much so. I, and I'm sure you, you've got techniques to, to address that. What, uh, what are those and how do they apply to security? Is it like, keep the, the machine from going into those black holes or is it filling in other data? Uh, how do you approach no, that? No, it's a super interesting problem. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and being a nerd, I would answer it at multiple levels. The first level is at the training side of things, right? And so we spend a lot of time trying to understand what data is the most impactful at improving the AI. So it's all data is not created equal in terms of that. Because, and the more you're efficient at that, the more efficient you can be at making models. Then there's things like tying using RAG. How do we tie this to real data sources to keep it interesting? The most exciting thing though lately is we announced as part of Gemini 1.5 that we have this really large context window, uh, a million token context window. What that means is your prompts and the amount of data you feed into the AI on any given query can be enormous. The more data that we fill in as part of that context window, the more likely it will be not to hallucinate because it can use those data sources in preparing its answer. So if we know the answer is roughly in this space, we can help, we can give almost like a cheat sheet to the AI when we give it the prompt so we can make sure that it doesn't hallucinate. So, you know, I think you're seeing rapid evolution of these techniques. A combination of those techniques is ultimately the thing that's, uh, that's helping a lot and it's really helped us, you know, get down the hallucination level quite And that bad. cheat sheet is coming from another AI? No, I think for us what we know is we know the data sources that are most relevant to our users. We right. have that Mandian threat intelligence. Yeah. So we can feed in a giant pile of threat intelligence, for instance, alongside your query, if we know the industry you're in, we know the usage use case, we know what kind of threat you might be dealing with. We can kind of package all that up to help make sure the answer is as clear and crisp as possible. So, I want to ask you about AGI. You know, we don't know when, <laughs> you don't know when, but we don't even know if, but let's assume it's going to happen. I actually think it will. Elon Musk the other day at the Milken Institute said, he said, I think within five years, I forget exactly, so his time frames are always compressed. Yeah. But he said at some point in time, only 1% of the intelligence on Earth is going to be human, or biological, I think he called it. The rest is going to be machine. Okay, let's assume that happens. What does that environment mean for security? Does that mean, we're just watching the machines fight each other? <laughs> What's the future role of the I love of the James human? Cameron movies. Yeah, uh, there you go. No, uh, I think when I, look at the, when I look at the space, it is so hard to predict mm. how this will play out. And so, first of all, this is why Google has such a strong commitment to AI safety. And I'm not, I'm not an expert there, but you know, we have put a huge amount of effort into making sure that we, how we train our models, how we uh, secure our models, how we track the data provenance of our models. And I think there, sometimes Google gets uh, negatively dinged for not moving fast enough in some of these AI areas, and part of that is that we believe safety yeah. is incredibly important. Mm. I think what I can say is when I look at what's happening today, and the biggest threat that's happening today is hackers, attackers, are trying to figure out how to use the AI that's in hand and will be in yeah. hand for the next few months. And honestly, that's what I'm a lot more worried about in the short term, which is, how are they going to use that to our advantage, their advantage? So we view it, you know, one of our responsibilities as having expertise in security, having expertise in uh, AI, how do we make sure we tip the balance in the favor of defenders? You know, how is it that we keep uh, people safe? And that's why we've been making all these investments. So, Will, do, do, you, do you worry about open source models hmm. and the ability to affect those open source models, uh, 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 maybe not having the same ethos as a, Google and conservatism. I, you know, I do worry that in looking at some of the spam that has been generated out there and some of the, some of the phishing attempts that have been generated using open source models, that's a real concern. Yeah. And I think that's something the industry has to really pay attention to and try yeah. to address. Yeah, I mean, I, we love open source, of course. Yeah. The innovation, yeah. Google, you know. Yes. I mean, look at, look at Kubernetes. I mean, it's yeah. the, the gift that you gave the there's, world and so many others. There's this constant trade-off between how mm -hmm. can we get people used to this technology, understand it, and leverage that power of open source to build that kind of protection versus the risk of having that from an attack. Fascinating conversations. I really appreciate you guys. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Uh, it's Loved great it. to have you. Thank yeah, you so much. Absolutely. Love to have you back, Brian. Great. All right, thank okay. You. Hey, that's it from the theCUBE's coverage of RSA 2024. 
Check out siliconangle.com. We've got special security section. Rob Hope is doing a fabulous job over there. Go to thecube.net. All these videos from all our shows are available instantaneously almost. We go live right on demand. And then check out thecuberesearch.com. Shelly and her team are pumping out content all the time. And go to thecubeai.com. I just talked about our rag. Ask it a question. It'll give you an answer. It'll give you some clips. Thank you for watching. This is Dave Vellante for Shelly Kramer and David Linthicum and the entire CUBE team. Great job this week, guys. We'll see you next time.